Your teenage child has been diagnosed with functional neurological disorder, short for FND. Why? What is the cause of your teens suffering from FND? Hi, my name is Dr. Jin Lee. I'm a pediatric psychologist and chronic pain survivor myself. My mission is to help teens and their parents resolve persistent physical symptoms such as chronic pain and FND so that they can get their life back and feel like normal again because I truly believe every teen deserves so much more in their lives. If you're new to this channel, then make sure to click the link below to grab a free PDF parent guide on how to help teens at home who is struggling with chronic pain or FND. So get the copy today, it's completely free. So today's topic is about cause of your teen's FND. So what is FND in the first place? Well, functional neurological disorder, short for FND, is an umbrella term to describe this cross-wired problems between the brain and the body when physically there is no structural damage. And believe it or not, FND is a number two diagnosis that you would get in a neurology clinic despite nobody talks about it and nobody knows about it. Probably including you until your child got a diagnosis of FND. By the way, the number one diagnosis that you would get in a neurology clinic is headaches and migraines. So how is FND diagnosed in the first place? Well, according to this book, DSM, also known as Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, the most recent version, you have to meet these criteria. One or more symptoms of altered voluntary motor or sensory function. Clinical findings provide evidence of incompatibility between the symptom and recognized neurological or medical conditions. Number three, the symptom is not better explained by another medical or mental disorder. And number four, the symptom causes clinically significant distress or impairment in social, occupational, or important areas of functioning or warrants medical evaluation. Now, FND, as I mentioned, is a broad term to describe this crosswire problem between the brain and the body. So as you imagined, there are so many different subtypes or symptom types. One could be with weakness or paralysis. Number two, with abnormal movement, tremor, twitches, gait problems, dystonia, things like that. And then sometimes these conditions are also called functional movement disorder. So this is part of the reasons why FND has so many different names and nuanced things and subcategories, and that's why not that many people know about it. But moving on, number three would be the swallowing symptoms. Number four, with speech symptom. Number five, with attacks or seizures. So this is the most common subtype of FND, also known as PNES or NES. So these are psychogenic non-epileptic seizures and or NES, non-epileptic seizures. As I mentioned, there are so many different names that are describing different various things within the FND, okay? Number six, with anesthesia or sensory loss. Number seven, with special sensory symptom. And number eight, with mixed symptoms. So anyone can have any of these combinations of things, one or two, or all of these combinations of things. All right, so FND itself, again, is sitting in this category of somatic symptom and related disorders, which used to be called somatoform disorders. Therefore, there are so many different names that is associated with FND. So what causes FND, which is today's topic of this video? Traditionally, FND was purely considered mental health disorder and therefore, there is all psychological stuff going on, there's a trauma, there's a stress, and there's anxiety. So FND used to be called convergent disorder, which came from the psychoanalytic theory, which states its unconscious psychic conflict is converted into physical symptoms. So it's kind of like a body speaking on behalf of you kind of thing. And because of that, previous connotation and meanings and conceptualization is what we would call it, 
a lot of people still believe that FND is all in your head. It's all psychological and it is all trauma and it is a mental health problem and nothing else. To the extent of some people might say, you're faking, this is not real. And, um, oh, it's good thing that you don't have this or that and this is better. Kind of invalidating or even gaslighting comments from other people because of this history. And speaking of which, the history, once again, according to this new book, functional neurological disorder is now called functional neurological symptom disorder. So you would hear these interchangeable terms FND and FNSD, depending on who you talk to, when you talk to, where you talk to, okay? That's why it's kind of confusing. And related to that, I want to make a distinction between adult FND and then teen FND. Because I am noticing as a pediatric psychologist, a lot of times the problems that teens are experiencing are sort of lumped into the similar situations that are happening in the adult world. And I want to clarify that teens are not really small adults. So they are different. And how they're different specifically for FND is this. So if you're an adult who's got diagnosis of FND, then chances are the majority of the time, yes, the trauma is in some way related. That's a common statistical findings. However, for teens who get diagnosis for FND, which by the way, the peak diagnosis of FND amongst children are between the ages of 10 and 14. So this is a middle school, kind of high school, you know, age range is a peak time for these kids to get diagnosis of FND. So anyway, the relationship between teen FND and trauma are much less compared to adults who have FND. Statistically speaking, it's actually less than 50% of the case. So if you're a parent watching this video, and secretly giving yourself a hard time for not discovering or catching or not knowing if your child has had this unknown trauma and then giving yourself a hard time, I would say that may or may not be the case for your child in particular. As you can imagine, there are so many different subcategories and so many different things going on within the one diagnosis of FND or FNSD. Therefore, if you imagined there is no one thing that is causing everyone's FND. In fact, it's a lot more complex than that. So how complex is it? There are three prongs to it, biological, psychological, and social component. So the biological component can be anything related to illness, injury, IQ, temperament, family history, genetics, brain dysfunctioning, lifestyle, things like eating and sleeping, all of these things are in the biological category. Now, psychological category, yes, the trauma can be part of the issue, but it just doesn't have to be that way. There's so much more to it than that. So it could be the baseline anxiety and depression or any other psychiatric con conditions. But more importantly, your child's belief system, uh, the mindset, the way your child thinks and feels and acts and coping strategies and social skills and all of those things are in this psychological category. So the social category can be anything like friends, family, school, extracurricular activities, cultural expectations, what's happening in a society, moving from middle school to high school, from one location to the other, changing the family dynamics and changing the environment. And all of these things can be related to the social factors. So I wanna quickly talk about an example of my former patient who I worked with. And this individual was a 12 year old boy with FND diagnosis. And within that, he had seizures, age regression symptoms. So he was 12, but he was acting like five years old when he was having these FND episodes. Memory loss, paralysis, headaches, and mood changes. And because of these conditions, his parents took him to emergency department multiple times. So let's break down his condition into this biological, psychological, social components because he hit them all. So biological, what was going on was he was a poor eater, pretty malnourished because of his picky eating habit. He also got sick right before he developed these FND symptoms. And right after he went to the emergency department the first time, 
he was put on these heavy duty medications, which essentially not ended up helping. He was also a terrible sleeper. His sleep schedule was really all over the place. And then brain function wise, he had this low level of perceived self-control and had a difficulty turning down the volume of his emotional center called amygdala within his brain. So all of these things are biological stuff going on. Okay. And psychological at baseline, this individual had an ADHD, mild anxiety and high expectations to perform really well, both academically and extracurricular activity wise from himself and his family members. And socially, there is a lot of stress going on at school and his um, extracurricular activity of choice was an, in the theater and acting field. And then there was a bullying going on and changing schools since the pandemic in the last several years. And so many things were going on. So what happened was after I started seeing him by session three, his FND symptoms were completely resolved. No more seizures, no more age regression behaviors, no more memory loss, no more paralysis, no more headaches and mood was getting a lot more stable. So that was great. The moral of the story is FND is a legit and terrifying and debilitating diagnosis, both for this individual and his parents. Oh my gosh, his parents were so worried and terrified and really scared to see their child acting very different and not knowing what to do and why this is happening until I started working with this family, right? So what I want to say is with the right approach, this FND can be resolved. So I want to give you the hope that you don't have to live with this for a long time. And with this family at the end of the treatment, I ended up seeing about 10 sessions or so just to make sure that um, his symptom management was great. And there were so many other things to work on things like eating habit and sleep habit and uh, stress management and high expectations and, you know, things like that. So I was going into these influencing factors for his FND. So then his FND was less likely to come out again in the future, right? So at the end of the treatment, the family commented, the parents were obviously very happy to get their child back. And this boy himself was also very happy and said he feels like normal again. And he could also use these tools that he learned from the treatment in other areas of his life. So what can you do if you're watching this video right now? Number one, make sure your FND diagnosis is indeed correct. So you might have to see a neurologist or specialist to get the diagnosis and then know what FND is instead of refusing to accept this diagnosis and trying to go on this quest to figure out this hidden diagnosis. Well, there might be this hidden diagnosis for your case in particular, but if you get the diagnosis of FND, then my suggestion is to work with FND specialist to resolve the FND as much as possible, the sooner, the better. And I also have resources in the description box if you want to find a provider in your area, possibly. Not everyone has a luxury of finding an FND provider right away in your neighborhood, but these websites and resources might be the first place to start. Now, if you're a dedicated parent and then your child who is bright and compassionate, ready to commit to resolve FND through step-by-step -step actionable solutions, then you might be a good fit for my program. Click the link below to schedule a call to talk to me directly and see if you qualify for the program. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next video.